Yes. Good evening. If I could call the meeting to order, if we could stand and say the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome, everyone. Um, Welcome to Windermere School. We uh, are excited to be here tonight to dedicate this library. I believe it's the first time in my nine-year tenure we've ventured out to one of the elementary schools for one of our buildings, so very exciting. So welcome. All right, we have no visitors wishing to speak. Do we have any special committee meetings to report? We did have uh, uh, an audit committee meeting, um, which is going to be recorded on tonight. So we'll just leave it for that. Um, so that we'll turn it over to you. All right. Thank you. Um, first up on the superintendent's report, we have Mr. Carl Widner from Dresden and Malecki for our annual audit report. Welcome. Thank you for the introduction. Hello, everyone. Beautiful place you have here. Nice job. I will be presenting the results of our external audit. Um, my name is Carl Widmer. I'm a senior manager with Dresher Malecki, and we do the district's external financial statement audit. This past year, or we're just wrapping up our audit of the fiscal year ended June 30th, 2017. And tonight we'll present a brief summary. I know you want to get to the more exciting things here, so I'll, I'll try to be quick. As Paul had mentioned, we did meet with the audit committee and we go over the financial statements and our observations in more detail, um, and they feel like questions to us. Didn't really have any issues to take care of, so at this point I'm just going to run through a summary of what the financial statements are going to be. So the products of our audit, we're hired to provide an independent third party verification that the district's financial statements that are put out and compiled by management, um, that they fairly represent the district's financial position at June 30th, 2017, and then the activity for the 12 months thereof. The products for audit, at the end of the audit, these are the, the four main pieces that the district will walk away with from us. The first being the financial statement package. That's the piece that most of you are familiar with. Um, these are the district's financial statements. As I said, management puts them together. We only own our opinion. That's a couple pages in that whole booklet. Um, but that's, that's the piece that when you go out and sell bonds, when you're looking to receive grants with federal state agencies, they want to take a look at your audited financial statements and see that you didn't have any problems. The next piece is the management letter. This is a, a forum for us to provide any recommendations or note any findings that we came up with during our audit during the year. Third item is a formal letter with some auditor communications. This is a required piece of the audit, and it basically concludes the audit. It says, did management fulfill all their responsibilities, and did we as the auditors fulfill all of our responsibilities that we entered into with our engagement letter at the onset of the audit. Lastly is a smaller little financial statement, and that's where we take a look at the district's extra classroom report. That's going to include all the various student organizations and clubs and a little bit of their annual activity. So to get right into the financial results of this year, what you'll notice is both revenues and expenditures went up from last year. This graph is going to compare your spending to your money coming in, the red being the spending the last five years. And what you'll see is this year, different from last year, your revenues, your money came in, coming in actually exceeded your spending. So what it resulted in is a net increase in the district's fund balance of $676,000. So to compare it to last year, the district actually used or came in below by 1.5 million. So the 676,000 increase the fund balance is welcome after a year of spending 1.5 million in the prior year. Carl, I just uh, sure. to interject, I think um, your point is well taken and that was um, a plan 
when we put the uh, spending freeze on early last year in November, there was a recognition that we had spent 1.5 million, and then there was a plan in last year to spend 1.3 million um, for seed money for our upcoming capital project. So we recognize the need to help replenish some of our fund balance and reserves, and um, so that was part of our plan. And we actually came in a little bit lower than the target we had set, but we're pleased with the uh, the outcome ultimately. So as the superintendent was mentioning, that activity on the previous slide. It results in your change to your fund balance, or what money do you have on hand that's in the accounts. So your fund balance at the end of the year, and this again is the past five year trend, the red represents restricted amounts. Those are monies that are tied up that have legal or external restrictions with that money set aside for particular purposes. And the light blue is going to represent your unrestricted. That's going to include the unassigned fund balance for the money that's available at the district's discretion. And then also a little piece that's assigned, and that'll actually represent the portion that the district includes in their 17-18 budget to balance the budget. So if you're looking at the 16-17 year, the restrictive is at 3.8 million compared to last year, 4.3. So you look at that and you say, reserves went down about half a million dollars. And the changes to all the various reserves are summarized pretty simply. The district, as Anthony mentioned, utilized 1.3 million of its capital and then a transfer from the repair reserve to fund 1.3 million dollars transferred to spend on capital projects. Okay, so that reduced our reserves by 1.3 million. On the other end of it, they included an increase to the retirement contribution reserve of 820,000. So that basically takes care of your, your wash and your net half million dollars use of reserves. So what that leaves is the unrestricted portion. The unassigned fund balance is coming in at around $2.2 million. And the other piece of it is $1.2 million assigned for the subsequent year's appropriations. That's about $930,000 that the district includes in the 17-18 budget to balance the budget. And then the remaining amounts are encumbrances or amounts committed to through purchase orders during this year. The piece that most people want to take a look at is that unassigned fund balance, the $2.2 million. So pretty consistent with the prior year. Um, something that's unique to school districts is that real property tax law dictates a district may not maintain unassigned fund balance in excess of 4% of your next year's budgeted appropriation. So your 17-18 budget includes $57.3 million of spend, planned spending. So if you take 4% of that, state does not want you to exceed that. The district hasn't had a problem with it. As you can see, that chart on the right hand side shows the district's compliance, and they have not exceeded the 4% in each of the presented years. Lastly, that, that kind of concludes the financial observations on the audit. This year, as far as our observations or any reportable findings, uh, there's only one reportable finding at the end of the audit this year, and that's related to an actual classroom issue with a, a few different housekeeping items that end up being a compliance issue. The New York State Department of Ed issues a compliance um, supplement that the district needs to abide by. And there's a couple issues with programs being run for grades below sixth grade, and then also some other um, issues with student treasure activities. Other than that, um, there was improvement from the past year. You recall there was another reportable finding last year. That's been addressed. I believe the board is receiving more information, more relevant information on a timely basis. And that's led to a successful audit this year. So we plan to move forward and we're prepared to issue an unmodified opinion. That's a clean opinion, that's what you want. And we distributed drafts last week to the board. So if there were any questions that you had saved, you know, I could fill them now or if you want to contact me have some contact information up there for you. Otherwise, I don't have to spend any problems issuing by that on public <coughs> Carl, if I could make a comment, just so the member of the audit committee and Mr. Bibolo is as well, um, 
I think we saw this year, you know, obviously a vast improvement in the whole process um, and uh, the, uh, the extra classroom activity fund, I think, with our new business official, those items are we're looking to have addressed for, for next year. It is something that's been a reoccurring pretty much every year I've been on the board. We've always had that type of uh, comment. So that is something I know we're looking to address this next year with uh, Mrs. Bozinski on board. So, um, I don't remember. We did look at it at our last panel audit, and it was one of the findings, but they were consistent with the actual findings. And just to provide comfort here, you're not the only district that struggles with the extra classroom program. But it's very difficult when you're being involved with um, student participation to train everybody, the, all the staff and treasurer that are rotating out after a year. So it is tough to get a hold of. Um, but the district does uh, display the intentions to address. Our, our spending plan also was, um, is the person who has to sign all the bonds for the capital projects when they close out right now. I just signed one uh, a month ago and uh, was told Moody's was very interested in our, our year-end uh, numbers and where we were ending up. Um, they were very uh, interested in where, we're, our, where our surplus was going to be and that you know, helped with our 1.79% borrowing um, interest rate that we achieved, which is, they told us the, was the second best in the area region, in the yeah. region that we were able to achieve because of that. So just to point that out. That's our part of the work for the district. Thank you. Thank you. You may be in the um, history books as the first public presentation of the new library. I'm honored. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, the second piece we have in the superintendent's report um, is really the reason why we're hosting the meeting here at Windermere's Library Media Center. Uh, we unfortunately had uh, a former teacher pass away and in her passing uh, she made a bequest to the district with the um, directive really that the funds be used to benefit the kids at Windermere Boulevard Elementary School. So as a former teacher in the school, um, Lorraine Mikey wanted to ensure that the students at Windermere continued to benefit after she had passed and through a lot of hard work which you'll hear about um, now and towards the end of the presentation we were able to hone in on the Library Media Center because we felt like it really is the hub of the school and a place where the most kids would benefit over the, the most uh, significant amount of time. So I'm pleased to welcome our principals, um, Mrs. Flanagan and Ms. Lavin, along with uh, Dr. Sean Fennell to talk a little bit about our new Library Media Center. Welcome. We are thrilled to have you here today. On behalf of the whole Windermere School community, we're really thankful that the Alumni Foundation has joined us, the school board has joined us to the dedication, for the dedication of this wonderful library. A library is the hub of the school. It's the heart of the school, right? It's where kids come to be inspired. It's where kids come to create. And we are so excited to have a library that will inspire, that will allow kids to create and collaborate and learn like none other. This is all due to the in memory and in thanks for Lorraine Meineke, one of our, our teachers here. She worked for Amherst for 35 years, and we are thrilled to have one of her colleagues who's going to tell you a little bit about Lorraine and why she selected Windermere to be the benefactor of this wonderful gift. So Sue Clark, why don't you come on up and tell me a little bit about our former colleague. Thank you, Larry. Lorraine Lori Meisty loved learning at a very early age. Whether it was learning to read or learning to play several instruments, Lori loved a challenge. She was without a doubt the most intelligent person that I have ever known. She received many awards, 
as valedictorian of her high school class. Graduated summa cum laude for Buffalo State and mind you, three years, not four. And received a master's degree in elementary education. She was also wanting to pursue a, de a degree in administration, but realized that her true calling was to be with children, especially young children. She wanted to instill in them the love of learning, which would carry them throughout their lives. I worked with Lori for the five years before she retired. Her lessons used every medium that was available to us back then, a craft, a story, a song, a film. They all made Lori's lessons come alive for her kiddos. I think if Lori were teaching today, she would love to be using the technology available to us. This library media center would make her extremely proud and happy. Proud because she is still helping children learn. And happy because Windermere Boulevard School has so many new and innovative ways to engage our children in learning. This is a wonderful legacy she has left for us. Just a short closing story, a personal story, to let you know how Windermere was truly Lori's family. Every Sunday when Lori came to church, she would walk down the hall and never greet me by saying, Hi, Sue. Good morning, Sue. How are you? The first words out of her mouth were always, How's Windermere? Thank you so much, Lori, for your 35 years of teaching, your 11 years of subbing, and for your kind gift to Windermere. You will not be forgotten. we'd like to give each of you a tour of this incredible space and show you some of the great gifts that Mary Mind King gave to us and to the show. And so we have here is Mr. Moser, our librarian, who's going to lead the way with five students who are going to show you all the great things. Three students. Fifth grade. Five on there somewhere. Thank you, Declan. See? We've got Declan, Sienna, and we have Lauren Harrington with us today, and Mr. Mosher is going to lead us on the tour. Thank you. Okay, so for those of you who don't know me, my name is Chad Moser. I am the librarian at Windermere. And at this point, we're going to be giving you a tour. I'm just kind of going to interrupt them along the way to kind of put in my two cents. So as we introduce, we have Lauren Harrington, who's in Mrs. Woods Breider's fifth grade class, Sienna Tripp, who is in Mrs. Solomon's fifth grade class, and Declan Goldock, who is in Mrs. Rogers' class. So with that being said, Declan, take it away. <coughs> Hello, and welcome to our beautiful new library and media center. <laughs> Sit back, relax, and enjoy our tour of the new library. Except you can't actually sit back the entire time, because we are going to be moving around. We hope you enjoy what you see in your time. You're probably wondering why we are holding these iPads. We are going to be using the library's new set of iPads to help us while we give you the tour today. We'll see later in our tour that these iPads do a lot more themselves. It's safe to say that this is no longer just a library, but a new piece of Okay, so I'm going to tell a little story. Um, at the end of the year last year, I kind of had some open-ended questions come to me in my old library. Mary and Julie kind of came to me and they are like, what, what would you do if you could just redecorate this library and make it your own? And I was like, wow, that's a really open-ended question. And so so as, as we sat down and we thought about it and we talked about it, eventually I kind of found out that there was going to be some money left and we could potentially do some really cool things in here. Um, so those discussions turned formal and we decided that we wanted to create a space that was collaborative, creative, welcoming, flexible. And we're going to kind of show you some of those ways that we were able to accomplish that. One of Mr. Mosher's favorite parts of the library is the big presentation area. I think he only likes it because of this microphone, though. These CDs will allow teachers to present across the country. Not just teachers. We forgot about us. Who wouldn't want to hear my presentation on Tambora? 
Okay, so what's supposed to happen is for her slideshow that she created in the library last year on Tambor is supposed to work, but it looks like we do not have that presentation up, so a little technical difficulty. Um, hey guys, we're gonna use the microphone for, something on for, for all of us, so I'm gonna hand that over. Um, so why don't you please so as they're kind of heading over and getting set up to check out the new comfortable furniture, uh, one thing that we just wanted to point out here is we decided to make this space flexible. So if we are going to be teaching more than one class at a time, we would be able to present across to both sides. Every single Monday morning, which is my favorite day of the week, we have a really, really early Monday morning meeting. And before, we would always kind of cram onto this side. But now with this, we can open it up and we can present so that people are more relaxed, they have more space. Um, and we ordered these uh, storage cabinets that we'll call them that look wonderful, and there's four of them. So what we can also do is we can bring them straight across here and we can create two different teaching centers at once. So I could be presenting on this side while another teacher is presenting on this side. And as you heard from the microphone, we're able to put the audio onto both sides, or we can just have audio going on this side with one presentation and audio going on this side with another presentation. Um, so as much as you guys probably don't want to do this, we're going to be moving all over to this area. So if some of you want to kind of stand along here. Um, so we talked about how it was a welcoming space. We also talked about how we had a flexible space over there. Um, when we sat down, one of the things that we talked about this district and mainly this school was that we do a great job using our technology to consume information. But we wanted there to be a space where we could create information. And this is going to be more of our creation and collaboration lab. So you can see them right now. What they're doing is they're collaborating. These tables are set up with the chairs all facing each other so they can be working on group projects together at the same time. Our hope is that this screen can break into four different parts. We're still kind of searching through technology that works with Apple and with the Google Chromebooks that we have so that we can have four different screens across and they can be all working on um, a same project at the same time. Uh, we have our class of iPads over here, which are really going to help us create. And we have our green screen all the way over here. The green screen, for those of us that don't know, um, if when you're creating a video, and it's what we use on our morning announcements, what the camera does with our app is it pulls everything that's green and you can impose like a picture or video behind it. So our hope today is that we can get some board members to get up there <laughs> at one point and we're going to do a little welcoming video and I'm going to email it to Tony and then we're going to share it across social media. We want you to notice that as we are typing, our work is being shared simultaneously on the TVs. This room is awesome for working on group projects. The room is set up in a way that allows us to work cooperatively. Working together allows us to share our thoughts and ideas with each other. Free brains will always be smarter and more productive than just one. And now we invite you to come in front of our green screen. Any <laughs> board members? Well, board members, members come, come on, don't be shy. Let's go. is now going to use the iPad to record you. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. No one's wearing green? Come on, people, come on. Come on, don't be shy. That's a low ball. Here comes one more. Declan, here comes one more, sweetie. When we give you the countdown, we want you to say well, okay. Welcome to the new Windermere Library. Three, two, one. Welcome to the new Windermere Library Media Center. Okay, excellent. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> Thank 
you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good job, Chris. And redid the carpeting. Giant, giant job. So Chad Mosier, kudos. <laughs> a lot of other teacher assistants and teachers helped you. So oh yeah, yeah, no, they did. Yeah, thank you. Thank you everyone. So we not only want to thank Mr. Mosier, we also want to thank Dr. Schoenfeld, who spent a lot of time um, working with Mr. Mosier and buildings and grounds and the technology staff to really make sure that all the technology pieces were in place and ready to go. And it was a lot of thought yes. and discussions. So thank you so much for your time and efforts. The technology is a big piece of this. But lastly, uh, Mary and I really want to thank uh, Lorraine Meinke uh, for her incredible gift. And we hope that uh, she would be smiling and would be proud and be pleased um, because this surely will benefit so many children here at Windermere. So thank you. So thank you for the, the thank yous. I just want to add a couple. Um, of course, um, you know, Lorraine, for her generous monetary donation. Um, our Alumni Foundation, which is very well represented here, for helping secure the funds and uh, make them available and make this project possible for the district. You know, the, it was very open-ended. The, the task was to do something that benefits the children of Windermere. Uh, and I, I think we hit the nail on the head with what we've done here, but the Alumni Foundation was critical um, to our success, so thank you. Uh, Mr. Mosier and the principals who are being very humble, and Dr. Schoenfeld, Donna Freimeyer, Mr. Schnell, um, and all the technology department for designing this amazing space and the creative inspiration behind it. Um, the WBS Windermere staff for their hard work, um, our facility staff in particular under the direction of our new facilities director, Mr. Mark Rampato. Um, he really took the lead on ordering the furniture, organizing for the carpet to be involved, uh, or, I'm sorry, installed. Our, our internal um, staff did all of the repair of the walls and painting and stripping of the old wallpaper. Um, so that wasn't something we contracted out for. They did a fantastic job. Um, and then the faculty and staff and students for your patience and your willingness to let us get this project done um, over the time frame that we've had in order to uh, you know, make it available for the students and all of those that pitched in to help uh, move things out and move them back in and restock the shelves. So thank you very much. Um, really is an exciting space for us to have in our district and um, who knows next year maybe we'll do the same thing in another space in another building but this definitely gives us the inspiration to do so, so thank you i'd just like to mention as well uh, this is a moment in time and a special time to celebrate the space and the donation there's a plaque outside of the library as well with her name on it a special dedication so uh, it is something that we'll be able to talk to people and it's not a one-time donation that, that we see this as her library and a place that will go on for years and years and be recognized by our learning community so thanks for getting that situated thank you uh, the superintendent's report uh, carries on so the last piece here is the elementary curriculum update uh, by dr sean felt It's a real pleasure to work uh, in the Amherst Central School District. Uh, professional practice is something that's very important in professional development. Uh, we're lucky to have people uh, that are willing to put themselves out there a bit and be leaders amongst the leaders we have in the classroom. Tonight we're doing, which is the first part of our presentation on curriculum work that occurred over the summer and things that will be continuing throughout the school year. Uh, we're lucky to start with elementary in the elementary setting. We have uh, Mrs. McCabe with us and Mrs. Chittenden. They're going to come up and uh, present two aspects of a lot of exciting work that happened over the summer. English language arts is one component that we continue to work on. 
uh, tirelessly year after year and mathematics. There's a lot of other work that happens throughout the year, but at the elementary level this summer, we did a lot of exciting work. So I'm gonna have both Patty and Lori come up and we'll start that presentation so you can get an insight on the elementary work that's been done. Shanahan and we're doing staff development to um, 
foster good teaching practices in our classroom when it comes to reading comprehension. And we're going to continue our work with strategic instruction from pre-K to grade five. And here is an example of two wonderful third grade teachers from different buildings collaborating together and utilizing common language when it comes to comprehension instruction. What are our next steps as a committee? Um, our goal this year is to continue our grade level um, professional development with Dr. Shanahan. We have days on the calendar already. And I can say as a fourth grade teacher, I'm looking forward to my time spent not only with my colleagues, but with Dr. Shanahan um, honing my skills as a reading teacher. Um, we're going to complete um, aligning horizontally and vertically all of the comprehension strategies. So that way by the fall of 2017, um, 2018, we can actually move ahead and push out this comprehension initiative. Um, we want to um, further professional develop talk about needs that we might need. We also want to talk about what might be working, what may not be working, and refine um, our decisions along the way. And we look forward to doing that. Our main goal is to keep our work alive. Thank you. Um, I want to mimic what um, Patty said about being thankful for having the time that the district provides to us to meet as a two buildings together, heads together, um, and to be productive during the summer months. Um, we also look forward to that time and feel that it's um, valuable to all the teachers as we begin the next school year and we can um, turn the learning and present what we did to our colleagues. So this summer, um, we met on uh, July 31st of August 1st. We had two full days. Um, Again, the committee was comprised of um, equal representation from both Smallwood Elementary, Lindner Elementary, and representative from pre-K to five. And everybody was eager to be there and um, really did work hard. This is Patty said about the night. Um, day one, I had the opportunity and the pleasure of working with Dr. Schoenfeld. Um, we had planned and prepared to read some articles from NCTM that were um, very current and applicable to um, where we are with our math instruction um, and really got the committee thinking and then ultimately talking about um, using a consistent math language. And Teddy talked about their work is focused on using consistent language in ELA um, and we know that the benefits of kids having that language in the vocabulary um, grade to grade and um, aligned through every grade level is important, and the same is important um, with math. Um, in actuality, um, math is like a second language for all students, um, there's, because there's so much language to learn and um, connect to what they're doing, learning about, and knowing the meanings of the words. So it is important that we have that same cohesion with math language. Um, so we read an article called 13 Rules That Expire, we read an article called Establishing the Mathematics Middle School Agreement. Um, and then we also read an article called Supporting Here and Concise Math Language. Um, instead of this, say this. Or instead of that, say this. Um, basically, the articles talked about the benefit and the benefit of teaching mathematics where everyone is using a consistent language, where they're all using consistent models, um, notation and symbols and rules that really do enhance um, the conceptual understanding of mathematics. Um, so we had great conversation about that and kind of set some goals for ourselves, for the district, um, for the two buildings, um, and started working on some documents that will eventually be shared. Um, we also planned an opening um, day presentation, which we did um, beginning days of school to the staff. And we talked about 13 rules that expire in both buildings um, and talked about this importance of common um, language and mathematics. On day, two, I All right, okay. um, on day two, we um, invited Eileen Ryan, who's a consultant, to um, come in and present. And she's done a lot of work with this idea of purposeful math language. Um, some of the topics that she covered were um, using the same 10. She, she focused on um, the state 10 way of counting, 
um, which starts in pre-K and then continues on um, into fifth grade. Um, we talked about the language of part, part, whole, the relationships, and that, again, is something that um, started pre-K and continues on to grade five. The language of concrete, pictorial, abstract, and when you're working with kids through those, um, those cognitive levels, what, what that sounds like. We talked a lot about the language of math symbols. Um, an example that we um, talked about was uh, not using equals. We're talking about using same as, um, and always using same as, because when they get to algebra, that's what it really means. It's not equals, it's, it's same as. Um, we talked about the language of the unit language, which the math um, material that we mainly use in both buildings, it's called the story of units. So units are super important to what we're teaching and learning about. Um, the language of math stories and then questioning. So after um, having her present on those things, um, we talked about a plan for turning that learning and bringing that to all of the teachers, not just the, the teachers on, on the math committee, um, and making sure that everybody was um, aware of the things that we, the work that we had done and things that we had talked about. So we have a plan. We'll get to on the next slide, but um, I did include some of the participant feedback, so I gathered some feedback from the math committee members. Um, they talked about the article um, being very eye-opening to most teachers, that made us more aware and conscious of the math language that we're using in the classroom. Um, they thought it was a great idea to focus on, on common language and math, um, and for us to have that initiative. And we said it was, it was something that would transition kids grade to grade. Um, and then it says definite need for more training in common language as everyone's best experiences play a role in their teaching and understanding. Um, so you know things have changed a little bit and we learned math differently than how we're teaching math today. So we need to kind of change the language and change the habits that we've formed um, to help kids reach out on our own. And so for future professional development, um, we're planning on or we, we are planning on um, presenting a purposeful math language like an hour session during our upcoming November 7th staff development day, the superintendent's conference day, and then some smaller presentations either at faculty meetings or after school meetings um, at both Windermere and Smallwood, and then also offering possibly some summer professional development in the upcoming session. Um, what are the plans then to um, include maybe middle school, you know, in some of this language because, you know, if all these kids show up saying same as and then the teachers are teaching equal, it just seems like, is there a plan to go even more vertical? I think that there is some conversation and a plan about fifth grade teachers meeting with sixth grade teachers to kind of bridge that gap and talk about you know, where kids are coming from and then what they're prepared to do going into the middle school. So yes, that's a, um, a very important thing for us to be thinking about. Uh, we're at the point that we are looking more vertically, so that's a great question. Um, we do have relationships that we've started with fifth grade reps talking with sixth grade teachers. We're lucky that we only have a couple of sixth grade teachers, so it's easier to work with the middle school level and then we find teacher leaders at this level to have those communications. With Mrs. Shanahan, Dr. Shanahan, we have that opportunity to have someone facilitating the conversation of what's happening, three, four, five, that she's been working on for two years with our elementary, and then translating that to our sixth grade teachers. Uh, with math, we don't have that liaison, but we do have people that are willing um, to have that conversation. Um, we have been showing, I want to say, significant growth in the area of math in ELA, too, um, that we're showing um, improvement on the assessments that are in front of us. Um, and that is, uh, I'll say and then repeat it, that is an area that we can continue to um, implement and it's, it will show even more results uh, that are positive. Um, but we'll be moving up with that uh, change. Luckily we have a similar program of reason, so that's not any different, um, but we will continue to work on it. Curriculum has to, in my opinion, be developed with the input of teachers and your leadership in our district makes that possible. So um, initially the board was 
uh, wise to recognize the need for a structure to allow teachers to develop curriculum. Uh, so they supported the summer curriculum work uh, back in really 2012, 2011. Um, so they created an infrastructure that has really allowed us as a district to grow and develop into what you're seeing today and your leadership is critical to that. So thank you for all your hard work. Um, it's certainly noticed every day when I walk in and out of the classrooms you can see the work that you've done in action. So great job. Thank you. I said a question. Uh, this is the tape. Yes. The word recognition in uh, that's been implemented in this past year? It is. It's been implemented. We are fully engaged. So that leads me to that question. Do you and the uh, teachers that work with you in this area, are you seeing a difference even in the writing skills because of the word recognition in groups? It's, it's, I would think it would, but I'm just curious. Yeah, I mean, I think, as Dr. Schoenfeld said, we're, we're seeing significant gains. Um, and then we do a monthly reflection every ELA member. Um, when they have grade level meetings or we have opportunities to talk to our peers, there's a form that, that they keep track of. It's like a journal. Um, just reflecting on how did this month go? Because every month you're tackling new words, new skills, um, new strategies to teach them. You're using new materials. So we're keeping a log. Um, so that way we're constantly reflecting and refining um, to see if we can do better. The beautiful thing for myself and I'm sure for Lauren too is we loop. And so being able to make those connections. And so last year we initiated this and I did a lot of groundwork. I laid a really solid foundation for my third graders. And to be able to harvest what I sowed last year and to grow it and extend it even further with my fourth graders, um, it, it's, it's amazing to see. It's amazing to see them say, oh, that's a Latin root. Oh, that means water. Or today we did call and con. Oh, those, that's a prefix, and that means together. So collide means to bring together, to smash together. So I'm definitely seeing the language that students are using, um, not only through discussion, but in the reading materials of them immensely. Is Rachel so open to change to teaching instruction the way we do things? Well, you have to change, right? You gotta grow. You say that, you still have to do it sometimes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Great Thank job. You. That's the end of the superintendent's report. Thank you. We will need a motion for new business then. I'll make a motion for new business items F1, A through F, 2, A through O, 3, G, All right, we have a second. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor of approving new business items F1, A through F, 2, A through O, and 3, E, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, six, zero. <coughs> I don't believe we have any follow-up action items. And we have no executive session tonight, so we will need a motion to adjourn. <laughs> Second by Mr. Bob. All those in favor of convening the meeting, please say aye. Aye. Thank you everybody for coming.